Transformers opens today, the big 4th of July movie, with even bigger product placement. CNBC's Julia Borston joins us this morning with more on the big money surrounding the robots in disguise. Julia, good morning. Good morning, Carl. Well, the movie kicked off here in Hollywood with a midnight screening right here behind me and another screening at 3.30 a.m. Hundreds of people are about to come out of this theater as the movie wraps up. And this is the movie that brings Hasbro and General Motors to the big screen. Now, Viacom Studios, Paramount Pictures, and DreamWorks Studios co-produced this film, and they're counting on a big turnout from all of those kids who played with Transformers action figures. Another key thing about this movie is the first major tentpole produced under Paramount Studio Chief Brad Gray, and he He's hoping to cash in on a lot more than just the box office. Paramount is using this film to experiment on new concepts of, uh, of trying to uh, integrate um, you know, the brand into the movie, which could uh, encourage a lot of other studios to, uh, if this succeeds, to follow suit. So uh, you know, this is going to be highly watched by, by the industry. Now, Transform was actually spearheaded by Hasbro. Its COO is an executive producer of the film. And this extreme version of product integration, the Transformer toys are actually stars of the film, could translate into big returns for Hasbro by some analyst estimates generating hundreds of millions of dollars of revenue. We believe that this major motion picture will take Transformers to the next level and will introduce this brand for generations to come. So it's not just about the fans, but it's now about getting new kids involved and getting this general audience involved. The, the other star of the movie is General Motors. The Transformer robots all turn into GM vehicles, and the automaker's logos dominate the film. Now, GM surely spent millions of dollars for this kind of positive exposure, likely also giving dozens of cars to the production. Now, this isn't just a media play for GM. The studio also cashes in on the alliance. The whole reason that studios get into this uh, type of promotional arrangement is so that when the brand uses its own money to promote its products in the context of, of that particular film, it is free advertising for the movie that the movie studio doesn't have to pay for. Seems like we're going to only see more examples of this extreme product integration. In this case, Paramount is very happy to tap into an existing fan base, and they don't have to pay huge stars a big chunk of their growth because the stars are the automobiles and the toys. So one thing that's interesting is right now, Paramount and Hasbro are working on another movie together. It's in development. It hasn't gone into production yet. It's based on the G.I. Joe action figures. So we'll have to see what other sponsors and what other brands they drag into that one. Carl, back to yeah, you. Yeah, raises the question whether it's a movie or it's a commercial. Thank you for that, uh, Julia Borston, out in Hollywood. Let's bring in David Poland, the editor of MovieCityNews.com, talking about... Have we seen product placement at this level where the COO of a big toy maker is the executive producer and, and GM is, is basically the starring role? We haven't really seen it. I mean, for Hasbro, it's a completely different animal than it is, I think, for GM. It's a great play for Hasbro. Sure. Um, what they're going to actually rebuild. Are they, they're not going to sell cars to 10-year-olds. Well, the irony on top of it, that is that the cars become something else. That's the whole point of the movie. <laughs> right. So they're not even cars. Uh, the one reason to really do this with cars is to launch brands and launch new ideas. And these are the same GM cars we've seen. Uh, interestingly, Ford, though, is also using the opportunity to kind of relaunch the Cobra and things like that. So the style of the car that's the Bumblebee in the movie is actually being used by other people who are kind of guerrilla marketing it. Is it ruining movies? Uh, it's become so standard that nobody even notices it anymore. I mean, anytime you have any Coca-Cola or any brand at all, they go out and they get 20000 50000 whatever. Something like the GM deal, the main reason Paramount does that is not for the money, it's not for the cash, but for the, mark, for the dollars in advertising. They'll actually do a deal where GM is going to spend $20 million in advertising their connection to Transformers, and that's $20 million in marketing that Paramount doesn't have to spend when they're already spending 30 40 50 Interesting. on the picture. Uh, and, and the film itself is not the only place you find the ads, right? I mean, ads in the theaters, in the physical theater, oh, yeah. is at an all-time high. Oh, yeah. Well, they're tr I mean, any opportunity to find a place where people are trapped is what they're at. So you're going to get ads before, before the movies. You're going to get ads in the theater. You're going to get cars in theaters. Uh, you get displays in theaters. I mean, it's insane now. But it's, but it's all, you know, everybody's used to being marketed to so much But does that world. make it less effective? I mean, at that point, you yes. point out that you don't even notice it in a movie half the time. Yeah. Well, I mean, really, it's, it's now, it's kind of like a billboard somewhere where you, it's in the back of your head and how many times do you see the brand and things like that. I don't think there's a direct sale marketing, except something like Hasbro, where they're actually relaunching Transformers after it's been kind of quiet for about a decade. Yeah.
Joe, does it make you want to take the kids less because no. of the no. things they're going to ostensibly want afterwards? Um, no, not really. I, what I thought was a little was watching the Buicks turn into really cool, uh, <laughs> yeah, right. really cool things. Um, but, uh, so these none of the GM cars turn into a Lexus, I guess. They turn <laughs> into. Uh, There's no El Camino. <laughs> no hero. Or no El Camino hero. But but seeing the, I mean, I would just think that the Buick. Heroes wouldn't be quite as young and cool as some of the other car heroes, right? Yeah. You think. I mean, I would actually think about that in casting my Buick Transformer. Well, the Trans Am is the hot car in right? the movie, so yeah. that's the one. So what are the what are the Buicks? There's like? a truck. The, the There's a, the, the, the hot that's ones. Right. <laughs> Very slowly, they're mellowing and uh, <laughs> yeah, getting old. Exactly. It's fabulous. <laughs> actually, a, a car. There was a great product placement story where a screenwriter in Hollywood put a truck into the movie because he wanted one of the trucks. But get out of town. And that's how he got paid. Come he on. told them, we're going to make three of these cars go down the street. Two of them are going to be blown up in the movie. And the third one you're going to give to me filled with Cuban cigars. And that's how you're going to pay me for rewriting your movie. And that was a great deal. And it so. happened. And it happened, yeah. I it's love amazing. Hollywood. Saw the car, saw the cigars. I love Hollywood. <laughs> well, we asked you back uh, last time you were on. Will you you'll come back again, right? But um, we're not I'm moving till, to New we're Jersey. We're not until Thursday. We're <laughs> moving to New Jersey. It's not as bad. If you say that. Uh, it's a lovely place. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm a Manhattan snob, too. what can I tell you?